Hello and welcome back to Dragonfall. Um, we have just returned from the Humanus base. Uh, so we've got a couple of things to do here. All right, let's see. Samuel. I said Samuel. Hello again, mein Freundin. What can I do for you? I've uncovered what Humanus is up to. You'll find the details on this date. Excuse me, on this data pad. Beckenbauer eyes the plans on the data pad, then nods grimly. This fits with Humanus' established pattern of behavior, horrific and vile. According to this data pad, Humanus compounds all over Berlin have received similar shipments. They are planning to deploy the gas tomorrow morning. He exhales sharply, then nods again. I have a feeling the that the flux state will have a thing or two to say about that. Stahl has overstepped his overstepped his bounds. His hubris will be his undoing. Actually, I was his undoing. Volker Stahl is no longer among the living. That, that is excellent news. I am not ashamed to say that I wished the man dead. He deserved whatever you did to him. And now I'm going to see that the rest of his twisted organization suffers the same way that he did. You mark my words. Within the next few hours, the Humanist Holy Club is going to take a hammering that will make the Night of Rage look like a peace rally. Ah, uh, I hope not. I hope it's a little bit more um, calculated than that. I owe you a great deal, Alice. We all do. I will wire your payment to the account number that Amsel provided. Pleasure doing business with you. All right. Finish that. Now I think. Yeah. So we can return info here. Deliver the humanist donor list. The machine accepts the data upload. 500 new yen and one karma. And only a few moments later, a, cer a certified cred stick is spat out of the coin, coin slot. The phone's old LCD readout displays the text, Freedom, Equality, Information. Shockwell and Raita. All right. I hope this is for good. Like, I hope I'm not making a mistake delivering this information. But, eh. It is shadow running. Nothing is for sure. All right. Um, so we just need to talk to Amsel now. Um, given that that was a side job, right? It was a side job, right? I believe it was. Um, I'm actually not sure why Amsel wants to talk unless it's about this particular job. Alice, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I have been looking into the Harold Man the the Harfeld Manor. Whatever First Schwinga is up to, it's both large scale and well funded. I've uncovered money a money trail leading from holding companies all over the world to an offshore fund with a dummy address. From there, all of that freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harfeld estate. Wait a second, why would the dragon have investors? That doesn't make sense. It's doubtful that the Firewings pawns even know where the money is going. Their money is going. This is typical of draconic plots. Unco uncover a stream of money flowing behind the scenes, and there's a fair chance that you'll find a dragon at the receiving end of it. To a dragon, conspiracy is second nature. But Firstwing was different. She didn't scheme or plot. She acted. Yes, and look where it got her. When the Firewing launched her attack on humanity, it was an act of hubris. She lashed out because she didn't consider our species to be a threat. It would be equally hubristic for us to assume that she will make the same mistake twice. I will continue digging into this while you and the team tackle your next run. With luck, I will have more information to share upon your return. Sounds good, Paul. One last thing, Alice. Mallet was able to restore the readable surface of one of the of Green Winters' DVDs. 
If you'd like to take a look, you will find it sitting beside the player. Just one of them? She's still working on the others. Many of them are extensively damaged, and getting anything off of them is proving to be quite a chore. She has told me that she'll be in touch if and when she makes any headway. Thanks, Paul. All right. Let's take a look then. Load the second DVD. The software of the spinning DVD is punctuated by an occasional rattling, rattling sound. The scratched LCD display comes to life and a menu fills the screen. Play track one. The screen goes black for a moment, then Green Winters appears on the screen. The timestamp on the video reads 2054 11 11. All right. As I said, said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding hard facts on Fershwinga, so I thought I'd open things up a bit. Let's see what the rumor mill has to say. The screen jumps, and Winters reappears in a different location. He's now clutching a mug of soy calf in both hands, and there are, lar there are bags under his eyes. Well, that was enlightening, assuming that any of it was true, that is. So, for the past five hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier fringe theories related to dragons and the Sox. As a reminder, the Sox is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. It got zoned off back in 08, after, after the Katendom Gao reactor meltdown. Anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around about the place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on a survival of the fittest, kill-or-be-killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare inversion of Berlin. All of the anarchy, but none of the stability that the F-State provides. Radiation poisoning, cancer, and monopollution are just the icing on the cake. So when Adrian helped the Luftwaffe shoot down, shoot Farschwinger down, she crashed into the socks. That much is well known. What isn't as well known are all of the modern day myths that have arisen about her since. And tonight I've heard, heard an earful. I chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. That's a smuggler that operates in the socks. She told me about a dragon cult called the, Despi the Disciples of the Cleansing Fire. Apparently, these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. It could be Fershwinger or it could be nothing, but it's worth digging into all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me popular rumor in the socks is that the Fershwinger's astral form was, I guess you'd say, mutated by all of that background radiation. Some of the glow punks out there say that she's shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish as an intangible, radioactive ghost. I don't know how much credence to give any of this. After all, I don't have much proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be, but then she could also be a run-of-the-mill glow punk. Or maybe she's just yanking my chain and she's never been to the socks at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought, anyway. I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon thing is any scarier than a genuine dragon is, but it's interesting all the same. Now the big question is, will any of this get me any closer to finding Adrian? I'm going to go out on a limb and say no, but you never can tell. Winters leans forward and presses something off screen. The display goes black. The screen goes black and the timestamp reads 2054 11 12. All right, let's continue thinking outside the box. After the dragon fall, the great dragon Kalstein came flying into the into the socks to rescue the firewing, but he was driven off, some say killed, by Lafware and Nibblehair. So what if there's another dragon involved in all of this? Winters grabs a thick, leather-bound tome from a shelf behind him, licks a finger, and begins to leaf through it. All right, so let's run down the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First, there's the Golden Worm, Lofware, the CEO of Seder Krupp, and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Lofware's a local boy, so he'd be in a position to help Fershwinga. He certainly has the financial capability to help her, he could send a small army into the socks if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means, but I can't see how he'd have the motive. He actively prevented the Firewing's rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing is true for Nibelhar, so let's scratch both of them off the list. He flips the page, frowning. 
We've got Aiden, the great Surush. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Lofware. They've been, they're actively competing for territory in the Middle East. So I suppose that could be considered motive. Reviving the Firewing might cause problems for the Golden Worm. But would he risk a war with Seder Krupp by straying, straying onto Lofware's territory? Again, I don't think it's likely. He turns another page. There's Kelder out in Wales. He's pretty heavily invested in Transys Neuronet, so he's got the money. But he's too be busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal that Transys is going through out out in London to get his claws on his claws dirty in the socks. Well, that's interesting that we didn't really hear about. I, we didn't hear about Kelder in the previous game, did we? We just heard about Lofware. Uh, anyway, Flip Dunkles on out in the UCAS, who I've already spoiled about the upcoming things that he will do in the narrative. He pauses, shakes his head, then slams the tome shut. No, this is a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am. The Firewing is acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they absolutely have to. After all, why bother making nice when you're with your equals when you've got an entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? They don't need to work together. They have us to exploit. While this track does load, it's clearly corrupted. The screen fills with meaning, a meaningless stream of text. That does look pretty meaningless. I don't know. There's some things you could read and do, but I don't think so. Text disappears. This file is partially garbled. You can recognize a few words here and there, but they're interspersed amidst a solid block of corrupted text. Valclair and still my big, still searching for Firewing, swear to lean, I will find you if it's the last thing. Not getting any closer. Swear to new research, turning up. Don't know what or why. Uh, unclear. Files corrupt the screen field fills with a meaningless assortment of ASCII characters. Yeah, I don't see anything there. Why even have these if they're corrupted? I don't need to look at them. The screen goes black and the same digital chime that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD plays again. A crackle of static fills the air, followed by that same now familiar electronic whine. A few moments later, the display goes live. Valclair looks haggard. His eyes are heavily bagged and bloodshot, and his hair is must. He holds a cigarette in an unsteady hand. Hermie, it's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are, but having fun, no doubt. Maybe flirting with one of those unattainable beauties you're always chasing. He tries to smile, but it quickly f disappears. He takes a drag on his cigarette. That's good. I want you to live a pleasant, normal life. After all, one of us should. Valclair rubs his eyes. I, I can still still smell the smoke. Hermie, it's almost a year later, and I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. When I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There's no sound in this world as horrible as a burn victim's screams. The doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. They'd have me in therapy, maybe dose me up on SSRIs, like they do our, West, our, our veteran soldiers. He chuckles, then takes another drag. Quite a story for the tabloids. The great dragon slayer, Adrian Valclair, mentally incapable of wrestling with his own demons. He shakes his head. No, no therapy for me, and certainly no medication. I have a reputation to live up to, however poorly I deserved it is, and however little I want it. He pauses, stubs out his cigarette. The dragon is still alive, Hermie, that I'm certain. 
One day I will find her and then perhaps I'll be able to sleep through the night. The display goes black and the background wine fades away. A moment later you find yourself deposited back at the menu screen. All right, well, some interesting new flavor. Not a lot of actual leads, but um, certainly expands the narrative a little bit. All right, let's uh, actually, let's talk to Dietrich real quick. You got anything new to say? You really came through for me, boss. You ever need anything from me, anything at all, then you call on me, I'll come running. How's Alexander holding up? He's a good kid, nephew of mine. Give him some time, give him some time and he'll shake Stahl's programming. Might take a while, but he'll adjust to life here in the Chris Bazaar. In the meantime, I've got a good home for him. I found a good home for him. Samuel's agreed to take him in. Is that wise? Samuel's employees have no love for Humanus. Most of them don't even like humans. Best thing for the kid will be to learn through immersion. If he stays with Samuel's group, he'll have no choice but to interact with metahumans. Soon enough, he'll learn that they're no different than anyone else. First few days will be rough, no question, but he'll make it through. Come out the other side a better man for it. You've done your part. It's on him now, one way or the other. He nods grimly. Yeah, that's right. It is. And when push comes to shove, he'll do the right thing, just like he did with Stahl. Now, on to other things. Remember what I was telling you back before we climbed into the van? Yeah, you were saying that the Dragon Slayer was happy and that you'd be given a reward. That's right. Thanks to our, let's not mince words, heroic actions back in that swine pit. The Dragon Slayer has seen fit to grant me his favor. His grin widens. And now I know what that means, and what I can do with it. Well, don't keep me in suspense. He gestures at the ground near his feet. This. As you watch, the spot Dietrich is pointing at begins to glow. Lines of force spread out in a scintillating web, and a feeling of raw power suffuses your body. I've just torn open a channel between myself and the Dragon Slayer. That power that you feel is his power, pouring through the through the ether and on to, into that spot. If you're familiar with ley lines, it's the same basic concept. I consecrate a patch of, patch of ground, and as long as I stand on that spot, all of my magic gets stronger. He crosses his arms over his chest. Not bad, huh? What about another major shaman? Could someone else benefit from one of these channels too? He shrugs. Don't see why not. Like, sa like I said, it's basically a ley line. As long as you're on the Dragon Slayer's good side, I don't see why you couldn't use it. My idol. He isn't stingy with his gifts. Anyway, boss, I want to keep fiddling with this, learning to properly control it, and I'm sure that you've got things to do as well. You take care of whatever else needs that needs doing, and by our next run I'll be ready to use this. Sounds good. Take care, Dietrich. You too, boss. Does anybody else have anything new to say? As you approach, Iger turns to face you. Her rifle has been field stripped and is lying in pieces on a sheet of butcher paper. Arranged in a neat row along the edge of the paper are bottles of copper solvent, bore cleaner, and lighter fluid. Our fearless leader returns. What do you need? Uh, well, I don't know why she would have any thoughts, but any thoughts about the last run? After all of the moral ambiguity that we've been wading through, hitting Humanus was incredibly satisfying. What they had planned, it makes my blood boil just thinking about it. The thought of Stahl lying dead on the ground brings a smile to my face. I hope that he enjoys rotting in hell. Thanks, Iger. Jesus Christ, would you just talk? How many times do I have to click? Um, for the first time since you met her, Glory's expression seems to brighten. It's subtle, but it's there. You're sure of it. Alice, a pleasure as always. Need anything from me? If 
I didn't know any better, I'd think you were warming up to me. She studies your face for a moment before responding. I suppose you might say that. I don't talk to many people, Alice. It just doesn't seem to be worth the effort. I don't... I don't really feel much anymore. Not since... She caresses the chrome of her forearm with a hand made of articulated steel. This. If that's true, why are you still talking to me? I suppose because you've shown an interest and because you haven't let me push you away. She locks eyes with you. Her expression is blank. I don't want to mislead you, Alice. I still don't feel anything, not warmth or friendship or even trust. But I can appreciate the effort you're making. It's something new, and it's worthy of exploring. How are you doing, Glory? Golden as always, Alice. No problems here. You know, um, this is probably going to be an extended dialogue, so let me cut the episode and we'll come back to this. See you guys in the next one.